Many of you heard about the little school that we formed and it took such a big effort to allow ourselves to have such a nice, quiet space in the outer avenue, in the outer sunset, right near the ocean. And so today the class is empty, which is a very good introduction, because normally it's not so empty. Uh, and um, I just want you to see, you know, we have a stack of chairs behind, me, uh, behind us, right here. And um, we always sit with a chair and a pillow. We have a bunch of bowls that we like to lie on. For example, uh, this one, if I can pull it away from the other ones. And so we like to sit on this. We love to lie on this and to have a lot of fun if the back allows that which it does with many people, not with everyone though. So we have to be careful when we do it. And in fact, we have great individual supervision with everyone to see if anything is right or wrong for them. We have a place where we have weights with different um, sizes, starting basically uh, at one pound, uh, getting all the way to 15 and 20 pounds. Uh, even sometimes we bring here 25 pounds so everybody gets the weight that works for them for some people one pound is a huge huge undertaking and if they can do that that's a great thing and for some other people the 25 pounds is not a match for their real need you know so we have all that in this classroom and it's a very safe and nice environment. Outside we have a trampoline and a hot tub. It's just fantastic. Many of you saw it. We have Chris here, who is our office manager and uh, also school official that we have right now. And we have a staff of about four or five people. And so I just want you to know to which environment you're getting when you're getting into the school. So I want in this DVD to move forwards and perhaps we'll have a whole other section on this DVD and may divide this DVD. I'm going to start and talk about the principles of our work. I will take this chair, normally I sit in front of the class which is here, but right now I'll take this chair and we'll take a palming stick. Palming stick is like a little palming table with which I will sit and start with my palming. And if one of you who read my book Vision for Life knows that the minimum amount of palming that is affected is six minutes. That's the time that it takes to change the cellular structure of the eye and of the retina. It's just a wonderful thing that we have discovered. Let's talk about the principles of natural vision improvement and then the principles of working with the body. These days we live stressful life to a great extent. So the principles of natural vision improvement have everything to do with the lifestyle that we lead. People irresponsibly strain their eyes and they don't even know that and nobody tells anybody that you're straining your eyes. I had such a nice walk near the ocean when I looked at the waves of the ocean. It was so nice to look at a distance. And today I had a long six mile run, at least it's long for me. I know some people for them six miles is much of nothing, but for me it was a good uh, size run, especially since I've injured my knee falling in a mountain a few days ago. But the six miles felt wonderful and then I sat down and stretched on a hill and was able to see the waves coming to shore. It's just wonderful in San Francisco after all the rain, we have such wonderful warm day and we can actually sit, I sat just with my bathing suit, stretching and looking and counting waves and looking at the form of the wave. Very few people just look at the distance and have fun looking which is the biggest relief you can have to so much near vision. So we strain our vision a lot. We don't have the right light normally. Let's 
Talk therefore about the principle. Number one, deep visual relaxation. Because we suffer from deep visual stress. We all know how important sleep is. More and more science is talking about the benefit of sleep. But there is no science that talks about the benefit of deep conscious rest of the eyes. That's new science. That is the 22nd century science. We're going to talk about it a lot and we are pioneers. We bring that idea to the world that actually nurturing and resting the eyes is going to make a very big difference to this generation of iPhones and of computers. The second principle is adjustment to different light frequencies. I have a feeling that for the rest of my life I'm going to have to fight for your eyes and explain to you that the sunlight is your friend and not your enemy, while the medical profession keeps telling you it's your biggest enemy. They tell you with absolutely no base but just superstition that cataract is being formed because of the sun. There's absolutely no proof for it, but they keep talking about it. They tell you that you have to save yourself from the sun and now they're learning that many, many people have heart disease, osteoporosis and yes, even cancer for not being enough in the sun. So first of all, exposure to the strong sunlight and then exposure to the night. One wonderful author wrote, the night doesn't fall, it rises. And so in many ways we have no sense of the night. If you live in a big city, there's light. I can tell you, in the city of San Francisco, which is large, but not as large as some other metropolis in this uh, continent, we actually don't have night. When I take my classes for a night walk in the park, we walk in the darkest place we can, under the shade of a tree, shadow of a tree. Very quickly we see that there's halo and actually the night is way too bright. That's the biggest pollution we can have. We were used to the stars that stimulate our retina, the rot cells of the retina. So we must adjust to the night. I remember in Singapore, in the forest, we had a fantastic walk. It wasn't considered by the Singaporeans as a forest, but I saw it as, as that. We, were, we walked in a big park, in the trees, and we saw the stars. What a fantastic experience it was for us, and what a great thing it was for the retina of the eye. There I had a huge class of 126 people, and we took a walk in the forest. It was just fantastic. And then, we need to look at details. I can tell you that's exactly what was my problem. I remember that I was le learning to read Braille and my teacher would say, don't look anywhere, feel. So I didn't look, I just felt. And the result of feeling and not looking was that I didn't see objects that well. So now I learn to look at details, but most of the people these days ignore details. What do you care when you read a text? How the letters are written? No, you want to know the contents. And so many people picture whole paragraphs at once, whole pages at once. And the most precious part of the visual system, the macula, is ruined. Because the macula's purpose is to look at smaller and smaller details. That was the biggest understanding of Dr. Bates, which I'm so happy to inherit. His understanding was that you could look at areas which are so small, almost microscopical, and that's when you start to stimulate the macula of your eye. And then comes the fourth principle, peripheral vision. Now that you look at me on your screen, also, wave your hands to the side so you have a sense of your periphery. Close one eye and wave the hand with the other one. Close the other eye and wave your hand this way. See how much more periphery there is with the central vision. And then the next principle is balanced use of the eyes. 
when you strain and you look at a computer, you forget that one eye may work harder than the other eye. So creating balance use between the two eyes is very important. The next one is balance use within each eye. Very often we look down, we write down, we type down, and we don't have a sense of the rest of our visual system. The temporal area, the, the frontal area, we need to start to develop balance in the visual system. Next principle is body and eye coordination. And the last one is more blood flow to the head. Many, many people become blind these days because not enough blood comes to the head and for that reason not enough to the retina and eventually it leads to bleeding. Because not enough blood comes, we grow capillaries and the capillaries leak and hemorrhage and that's why the photoreceptors get destroyed. What we need is to get more blood coming to the head. Those nine principles are nothing that's going to change. What we need to do is invent many exercises and for that reason I've written my book about the 10 steps. And in my classes, and very soon we'll have the six day I class, we explain those principles in the most comprehensive way and we learn to fit them to every condition. Just yesterday I met a seven-year-old kid that medicine gave up on because he had a lazy eye, it means the brain did not use it. He is now using that eye thanks to the diligence of his mother and his and my own. And vision can definitely change from person to person. Now when we come to the body, we have several principles. One of them, start to be aware of most of your muscles. Are you aware that most of the muscles you know nothing about? You never use them. So we're starting to use muscles we never used before instead of straining the ones we always use. So when I ran, I ran also sideways and I ran also backwards. When I bicycle, I also bicycle backwards. But the idea is, Use muscles you never used before, and you'll find a lot of them. Integrate them with the muscles you always used. Then create better neurological connection that will create balance in your body. Body and mind connection through kinesthetic awareness is our principles. So let me just demonstrate one little exercise. Palm. First I will move my arms in rotating motion to relax my shoulders. Otherwise, I could be tense while palming. And I'm already palming for 45 years. So I've done something right in being able to continue to do it because sometimes I do it for an hour a day. And I remember the time that once spontaneously me and a friend of mine palmed for 11 hours that same day. So I rub my hands. And I put the palming stick here and I put my hands around the eye orbits and I focus on my breathing. And remember, less than six minutes doesn't count. And in our courses, we help people to sit for six minutes and palm. For the purpose of this, we will do less than six minutes to not bore the reader. The, the viewer. But here it is. I count 8 when I inhale and I count 11 when I exhale. My hands are relaxed. My hands are around the eye orbits. I will take my hands off right now, but I want you to know that I get people through wonderful visualization in my classes and of course in my tapes. And visualization could really help us a lot. Now in preparation for palming, 
I need to make sure that my body is loose. I'll put the palm stick back and then take it off again. But how do I prefer, prepare myself? First of all, move my arm in a rotating motion, tap on my chest, and visualize that the arm is really loose. So I tap with my fingertips and say to myself, fingertips, and then the arm is really light and loose, which means circulated. I move the arm in a rotating motion, I tap and I say, fingertips, fingertips, and I move it again. I will lie on my back and I will move from side to side really easily. So I'm starting to use muscles that I wouldn't use otherwise. I will bring my leg backwards. I will bring my arm upwards. I'll do exactly the same thing here. And the more we're aware of parts and the more we stretch the areas we always, always overuse, the better it is. So, let's remember with the body, we want to find the muscles we never used before. We want to relax the muscles we always overused. So for example, when I roll here, I use muscles I never used, the side muscles. When I stretch here, I relax the muscles I always overuse when I walk, when I run. And the same thing here. I stretch these muscles. I stretch the muscles that I always overuse, the quadriceps muscles. I stretch these muscles, the rib muscles, the shoulder muscles that I always overuse. And now it makes it easier for me to roll from side to side. Then I have to find a way to balance and to use all the muscles, the ones I never used and the ones I always overuse. And the result is tremendous. I'm becoming balanced. Now, as I get up, I will uh, take again the palming stick. And now with a much more relaxed back, my hands are relaxed, the shoulders are loose. And it's so much easier then to relax the eyes. And this is something that I want to explain. You cannot simply relax the eyes because you did the exercise mechanically. You relax the eyes when the hands can nurture them. And they can nurture them much better with a loose back. Welcome to our school. I'm so happy to present what we can pre uh, this whole uh, work that we do. And I can't wait to see you more and more in my classes.